Hello and welcome to the Fedora Files. I am Gregory Fedora. And with me once again is my good friend, Chip Stetson. Uh, he is our paranormal expert. He's a ghost hunter. And you, you've gone uh, recently on a uh, little hunt, as it were. Where, where did you go? Well, actually, um, we headed to the Ohio State Reformatory. Um, it's here in Mansfield, Ohio. And uh, actually, it's a very interesting building. A lot of people probably recognize it from the movie Shawshank Redemption. That Love was, that uh, movie. The, yeah, that was the main main focus of that movie. Um, it was uh, created, I guess it was built in uh, 1896. And it started out as an, uh, or as a reformatory for uh, first time offenders of nonviolent crimes between the ages of 15 and 35. Now, starting around the 1930s, uh, they started getting a huge influx of criminals and people and inmates throughout the whole state, uh, mainly from the prohibition laws during the 20s. Um, Play guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love but, those um, guys. What in it? <laughs> there you go. Um, actually, what started it um, moving from the reformatory side to an actual full uh, prison was there was a fire at one of the Ohio prison uh they killed like 300 uh inmates wow. it's one of the worst uh, accidents in the history of the country so they started moving nonviolent offenders that were in that prison over to the ohio state reformatory uh people that were like burglars or you know i don't know just nonviolent um uh, crimes but it was their second or third you know time getting arrested so instead of going to the reformatory they went to the prison uh, problem is, <laughs> even though they were nonviolent crimes, you put them in with murders, rapists, and killers, and things like that, um, they're going to change. And things started to um, move away from reformatory side over to a full size prison. Uh, the difference between the two, um, when it was reformatory, the people usually spend about eight hours in their cell. Uh, the rest of the day, they would either be going to school, working, or going to church. And what the uh, primary focus of it was, was to give them a vocation so when they were released, they'd be able to become, you know, a normal person in society, carry a job, have a career, and do those sort of things. Now, after it became a prison, they still offered school um, and work, but they spent more along the lines of 23 hours in their cell as opposed to uh, eight hours just to sleep. And um, oh, wow. it got to the point where the, the reformatory uh, was only originally designed to hold about 1,900 people, and it got to the point where they had about 3,600. They'd have maybe three quarters. Or, yeah. Well, these cells were about seven foot by nine foot, and they'd have up to uh, anywhere between two and four inmates in each one of those cells. So um, it got to the point where uh, the inmates, they got together, they sued, and they said that it was inhumane uh, to keep them in conditions like that. Uh, the state of Ohio agreed and they officially shuttered the doors in 1990. Um, if it wasn't for the movie coming in in 1993, the whole place probably would have got torn down. Um, but they ended up leaving it up, let the movie, uh, you know, have the run of the place. They filmed the movie and then after the movie was done, they started tearing down, they tore down the outer wall, they tore down a lot of the buildings that were in the backyard uh, to make room for the new prison that they have out there. And then uh, a group came in and they wanted to save the building, um, the Ohio uh, Reformatory Preservation Society. Um, they talked the state into putting it up for auction. Uh, they were the only ones that showed up. They bought it for a dollar. <laughs> so, Very nice. Yeah. And the, the best part was the state gave them the dollar back. <laughs> so um, they, they, they've been uh, keeping it up. They've got a lot of artifacts from the movie. Um, they also... Uh, give ghost tours, things like that. So um, you can go up, they have uh, these self um, audio tours where you can go and type in a number and it tells you what's happened there in uh, uh, either the movie or from the, the prison itself. So how many people actually died in that prison? Well, now they have a, a cemetery that's in the back of the, the reformatory. It's not open to the public because it is a cemetery. Uh, they've got a little over 200 graves there, but those are only the bodies that weren't claimed by family members. Now, uh, because we know there's at least 200 people there, and we don't know the names of these people. They just have the their prison numbers on their gravestones. Um, there's a lot of people that think there, there could have been anywhere between 300 and 1,100 people die in that prison. And there were all sorts of manners of deaths. Um, people got shanked. Um, on the west side of the 
a reformatory, they have a waist high railing that only comes up maybe just below your hips. There were a lot of people that got pushed off, jumped, uh, fell on accident, and they'd plummet to their death. Concrete floor, five stories up. Um, there was one guy that uh, went up for parole, was denied, went back to his prison cell, doused himself with lighter fluid, and lit himself on fire. Oh, um, that's, yeah, there's that's uh, not there's, a way to go. Yeah, there was another guy that was um, in the uh, prison barber or shop, and uh, just while he was shaving one of the guys, slit his throat. So, I mean, there was a lot of different, uh, <laughs> a lot of different stories of different uh, people dying in that place. There's a lot of angst. Of this, do what? A lot of angst in there. Yeah, and Anger. because of that, it's held a lot of energy. Um, I think it's primarily made out of stone. I don't know if it's uh, limestone or not, but they say that that does hold a lot of energy. And there are a lot of stories about ghosts, um, interactions with people that have gone through the, uh, the reformatory. Um, they seem, from the stories I've heard, they primarily deal with uh, messing with uh, women. Uh, well, there's a bunch of men in a building and a girl comes in, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're lonely ghosts. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, now, when I was there, um, we didn't have, I mean, we didn't see any ap actual apparitions, but um, we did uh, get to go into what they call the attic. It's above one of the uh, wings. It's pitch dark. Uh, they do have chairs set up there because they do take certain groups up there. Um, it's not normally open to the public. Um, we walked in there and we just sat down for a little while and he was telling us some stories about um, after the fire at the one prison, they kept all of the uh, hardened criminals in that room until they could find places for them. So um, there was a lot of bad energy up there. And while we were sitting there, um, Barack was actually thrown at us. I sent, I think I sent you the video. You can yes, actually he hear did. the rock. Yes. I'm, I'm, I even asked the guy, I was like, was that you? He was like, nope, that wasn't me. And he, so there, he said that happens a lot. Um, one of the people I was with, she was walking through the uh, solitary confinement area. And uh, I was actually looking at the artifacts left from the movie. They have the tunnel that Tim Robbins crawled through, um, a few other things, uh, just interesting movie props. And, you know, I kind of like that stuff too. She thought I was actually in solitary with her because somebody said, hey, and then she could hear the footsteps running away and she turned around and nobody was there so she walked after you know the sounds nobody was there um, and she found you looking at movie material <laughs> yeah exactly she's like we're here looking for ghost chip and you're looking at <laughs> now, movie, movie memorabilia when we were walking around there was um, a door that um, we saw open up and then slam shut and oh. you know since you know you're supposed to think that you know ghosts are in here and that's one of the gimmicks to get people in there um you know, we were asking uh, one of the people that works there, you know, is this something that you guys set up? It's like, no. So he took us over, opened the door, showed us there aren't any wires, no electronics, anything like that. There's nothing that could have opened the door and closed it. So um, they didn't seem violent or anything like that. No, nobody got hurt. Um, it was just some interesting things that happened during, during our stay. And uh, yeah, I look forward to heading back there again. So Now, the Ghost Adventure crew, they went there as well. Correct. They did. And uh, did, now, did you make it down to the morgue like they did? Funny story about that. Um, <laughs> they don't have a morgue. Uh, they like to, yeah, they like to embellish and, you know, uh, jazz up their show to make it sound more interesting or more sinister or more creepy. Um, there wasn't a morgue at the prison because if anything happened to a prisoner, they just send it to the local hospital. Um, they had the morgue. There wasn't a need for the, the prison to have one there. So. Um, they so were you're saying that the ghost adventure crew was being fictitious and crazy. Oh, they lied. <laughs> oh, okay, you're straight up saying they lied. No, they, you know, they're, they're just trying to make more interesting, you know, uh, more interesting uh, atmosphere for the show. You know, more sounds better than uh, this used to be, you know, living the quarters. basement. Right. Now, there was a, a hole in the basement where they used to keep prisoners. And you actually have to climb in there and then they'd put a, but they sent a bucket down with your food or to use the bathroom. Hopefully they were different buckets. Yeah, let's hope. And, yeah. It sounds and, like it probably wasn't. <laughs> it probably wasn't. Now it got to the point where they did consider that to be cruel and in, inhumane. So they- uh, wonder why. Close that down. But uh, there are two boys that ended up drowning in there. 
and it filled up with water. They were stuck down there and they ended up dying. Now they're more um, uh, pranksters as far as goes. They'll, they'll, you know, like if you go up behind your sister as a kid, you just, you know, yank her hair real quick, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. That's, uh, that's something that tends to happen to the women that are walking around, you know, in solitary or around that area where it used to be. And um, yeah, it's, it's got some, it has a lot of interesting stories. There's a man in black that they say that, uh, that a lot of people see at night, um, a large, like six and a half, seven foot tall shadow. Uh, lights flicker on by themselves for no reason, flashlights, uh, people's batteries uh, go dead, just, it's, it's a fun place to uh, go. If, if you get scared easy, probably not because it is loud. There are a lot of noises. I mean, it is an old building. I'm sure there's animals that live in there. You know, uh, it gets cold during the winter time because it's all concrete and stone. It doesn't necessarily mean that there are ghosts around, but um, there is definitely activity out there. But would you say, uh, so in your opinion, it is haunted, the place? Yeah, no, I know. I just, from the little interaction that we had at the time we were there, I'd say that there is something going on there. Uh, like I said, we never felt in danger or threatened or anything like that, but there are people that have, you know, had sinister things happen to them. Uh, not us, but, you know, I think it also has to deal with the person's attitude going in. If you're going in looking for a confrontation or, you know, if you're angry or something like that, you might get those spirits. If you go in just with the curiosity, I think you might, you know, get the other kind, but. Okay, so, yeah. I think it all depends on the type of energy you're giving off. Very nice. And you you don't go in looking for a fight. You just want oh, to no. explore, find out what's going on. You're looking for truth, not for yeah, the, a I mean, sea battle against an unseen opponent. <laughs> well, and I don't want anything to, you know, attach my, uh, itself to me or anything like that. I do go in with curiosity as opposed to uh, confrontation. Um, I like the history. Probably a lot smarter. Yeah. yeah uh, Although I think you could take a ghost. Or a small one, yeah. The, the little kids, you know, maybe, yeah. yeah. The bigger ones, probably not. <laughs> so, uh, where's your next plan? Where are you headed next? On uh, well, there's a couple of places that uh are in Eureka Springs. Uh, I haven't really done much research on them yet. I'm going to be heading there in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm setting up an appointment so I can, you know, take a tour, look around. Uh, I'm going to take my my camera with me so i'll be able to get some video footage for you but um eureka springs is uh it's in arkansas has some interesting uh history it's it's a really neat town it's kind of uh it's like yellow springs ohio but on a larger scale um they've got a lot of uh, uh independent stores handmade goods things like that and um it's it's just a really neat town. And if you ever seen a picture of it, there's an iconic uh, building. It's kind of curved in the front at a Y street. Um, it's just, it's, it's a really neat place. To look into it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think there's one or two different places that I'm gonna be able to hit. And uh, then I'm gonna make my way down to Texas and see if I can find anything down there. Nice, nice. And as always, like when you go out hunting and stuff, you go the proper channel, you just don't jump into a building and break in and do things you <laughs> No, you're not no, one of those people. You because no. obviously uh, you don't want to go to jail. So. Well, and also if you if you break in, you know that's seen as a threat. So you could bring out, you know, ghosts that or spirits that uh, are more confrontational because that is their, you know, their home, their home. so to speak. So if you break in, uh, I think that can stir some some stuff up. It's yeah, always you're coming in with negativity and. So, and if you're breaking in, it's because, you know, I don't know, it seems like those kind of people are looking for trouble anyway. So true, um, true. I think that <laughs> stirs it up a little bit more. And then they like deserve said, the smackdown that they get. Yeah. I, like I said, I like going in. I'm more curious than I am confrontational. And uh, no, I'm looking forward to heading to Eureka Springs. It's, uh, and you, we'll it's have like, to have you back and you'll have to tell us what you found and what adventures you came across while you're down. There. Absolutely. No, I look forward to it. It's so good to have you on again. Well, I appreciate yeah. you having me. And we'll have you on, as always, when you come back. And then probably before then, because I have, uh, we, we were talking about some other cryptids that you and I were thought we should I'm discuss. To that, so we'll, we'll have to uh, do that Absolutely. at a later time. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to that one, too. Thank you again. And uh, the, those of you listening, as always, thank you. And stay safe and keep searching.